What up, Facebook Live? We're on time because we're here exactly when we meant to be. <laughs> That's not entirely true, everybody. <laughs> That's a, it's just here a we thing. Are. Share, baby, share. <laughs> Sorry about being a little late. Oh, yeah, I got to share. Yeah, Smoking and Toasting is live now. So uh, I, I like to believe that our very first few minutes of smoking and toasting, no one actually sees because they finally get the thing. I'm thinking so that's true. Yes. Everything we set up until right about now, now, yes, <laughs> <laughs> isn't really on the record until you watch it again. So yeah, so and just for you know, just to restate what I said earlier, I think you're a fascinating and fantastic human being. And uh, I just appreciate you being on the show. Nice. Nice. I'm glad we put that when the mics are on. Yeah, right. <laughs> in the contract. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Glad we got that done. All Welcome right, to the show, Facebook share. Live. We are psyched to be here. It's going to be a good day. Even though cigar smoking is apparently evil, we'll be uh, covering that. The shortly. evils of cigar That's smoking. Right. I saw that. That looks pretty entertaining. Oh, wait. Is that us? Mm-hmm. Smoking and Toasting is now live. Please share. Mm-hmm. That wasn't me. That was a sound machine. I saw nothing. I heard nothing. Okay. <laughs> Smoking doesn't laugh. Post. Last week, they're just giving you these three options. Oh, share right. So, so that happened to me. Go to the Smoking and Toasting page, and when you see the little video square, then you share. I tried doing that last week, and the same thing happened. This one like this? No. Go to. I guess they update this shit. Go to Smoking and Toasting. Now, uh, so you actually go to the Smoking Toast and page, oh, okay. then move down and find it. This, by the way, is our weekly edition of Smoking and Toasting versus the social media. Yes. <laughs> so far, the social media wins. So, but we're working social on Social media, it. too. Smoking yeah. and Toasting. Eh, yeah. Half. All right. I'm ready when you are. You ready, Ian? I believe so. I have now shared everything. This is the fun part of the show, the start. Let me put hello, everybody. Well, <laughs> welcome, my friends, to this fine radio program known as Smoking and Toasting, the show that's all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand rolled cigars. We are brought to you by our good friends at B&B Butchers and Restaurant at 1814 Washington Ave in Houston and in the shops at Clear Fork in Fort Worth. My name is Cruz, my humble and uh, always available co host. Well, not always available. We do Mostly go through, available. Uh, yeah, somebody's phone's on, by the way. We got to. Uh, kill the Facebook live feed. I don't know who that is. That might be Adam. Oh, that was me, uh, I think. So, Adam Andrus on the wheels of steel, by the way. And for those of you who are too young to appreciate the phrase wheels, wheels of, of steel, steel, yeah, that's that's what they used to say. It was it was never like really cool. It's only cool now in an ironic way, but that's what they used to say. Uh, le- that's how they used to describe the DJ. Because we'll just call DJ him DJ Adam two. A. That's right, DJ Adam A. And now these days the DJs don't use the wheels of steel, though they nah. do everything on computers. So. <laughs> the wheels of software. But back in the day when it was but like... But it doesn't wooka, sound wooka, as wooka. good. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I agree. So, Ian, you know, this... I just want to point out that okay. Thursday... <laughs> and I don't get very many days off, and Thursday is one of them, and you always make me come in and work. That's true. This You make me do this job. Yeah. This job, where we taste and talk about cigars. You're, and you're the worst boss and, ever. You're the worst boss ever, indeed. Uh, uh, here's uh, something of note. It is show number. Wait, where's the drum roll? 75. Ooh. Today is. Today is Silver Jubilee, isn't it? I don't know. Is that 75? Is that I, silver? Maybe. I don't know. I know it's not tin or, or <laughs> balsa wood or whatever the early ones are. If I'm wrong, don't bother correcting me because it's it's, it's Silver not, Jubilee from It's now not on. that important. It's Silver Jubilee. <laughs> that's that's so, the name of this episode, no matter what it is. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, we were going to name the episode The Evils of Smoking Cigars because I like, I'm going to be sharing with you a new uh, column that I stumbled across about I like that better. The Evils of Smoking Cigars. So you can look forward to that. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> uh, it is show number 75. Uh, we are brought to you by B&B Butchers and Restaurant. And this is the show where we talk about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand-rolled cigars and other things. Uh, A Scandinavian tobacco group, STG, has acquired Thompson Cigars. And when I first saw that news item, I think I may have even mentioned it last week, Mm -hmm. it didn't click to me that Scandinavian Tobacco Group also owns Cigars International. I didn't know that. And Cigar.com. 
So they now own three of the four biggest um, mail order uh, cigar uh, places in the world. Which is kind of interesting. That is kind of interesting. What's that going to do to prices, I wonder? I don't know. It's going to be interesting. Now, one thing it will do is it will change availability, I think, because Thompson will now have some of the CI and Cigar.com exclusive brands that other mail order places don't get to sell. Interesting. And I'm hoping that some of the Thompson things will also show up on CI and Cigar.com. Right. We'll see. And speaking <laughs> of which, CI, you need to put those Nico Libres on sale again. I'm oh, out. I have a, I have a couple. Yeah. Talk to okay, me. I yeah. might have to hit you up for Talk that. Talk to me after the show. <laughs> uh, we also will be giving you a cigar festival list through August. So wherever you are listening to the show, there could be a cigar festival near you that's uh, going to be coming up now between now and the end of the summer. So we'll be telling you about that. And four questions, four pressing questions for craft beer in 2018. These are the, the issues, as it were. Because 2017 was huge. For craft beer, it really was. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a big, big time year. It was a pivotal year as far as uh, uh, just styles as well. Big, well, it was yes. big shift in, in style preferences and all kinds. And of it was you know the introduction of the uh, the northeastern or New England IPA style, which yeah. kind of uh, came to prominence. It was a big year for sours. Right. It was a big year for anything barrel aged. Which re- that really kind of came into its own in 2017. And two of the most important things that happened uh, with beer in 2017 is Bell's got distribution here, mm-hmm. which is delicious, <laughs> and also um, uh, Revolver Brewing got distribution. Revolver, here, which is which, great. Yes, those two companies make some of my favorite beers. So. Now, what's interesting about craft beer in 2017 is that, despite the fact that some of the largest producers of craft beer, in terms of just volume and overall sales, despite the fact those were acquired by the big boys, so they no longer count in the survey and, and, and addition for craft beer, craft beer still had another big growth year. So even though those guys are no longer part of the total, which, you know, Carbach and Wicked Weed and some mm-hmm. of the other, no longer part of the total, the, the total was still elevated from where it had been the year before. And uh, so we'll talk about that and some of the questions which face craft beer in 2018. But it's been, uh, I actually have a story which I'll share some of the stuff from you. Craft beer is the strangest, happiest economic story in America. I love that. So that's uh, so it's very cool. So we'll talk about that. Speaking of craft beer, we're going to be trying some interesting ones today. Harpoon has released their uh, seasonal spring. Harpoon, one of my favorite breweries out of Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Fresh Tracks Spring Pale Ale, and we'll be trying that. Interesting. Uh, yep. Odell Brewing Company's seasonal is out as well. It's the Settle Down Brown. Actually, this one's been out for a while. Odell I've had out of Settle Collins. Down Brown. Yeah, I like Settle. I had Down a feeling Brown. you were yeah, going to like that. Yeah, it's good. And then really interesting today. NOLA and Brewery Tarot, both out of New Orleans, have teamed up and done one of those collaboration beers, and it's called Caddy Wampus Barrel-Aged Sour Stout. Okay, now I grew up in Liberty, Texas, all right? So the only place I'd ever actually heard Caddy Wampus before was in Liberty, Texas. Well, I I just love the word. And then, like, two months ago, my wife said something, and she mentioned that it was Caddy Wampus. (laughs) So and here and it I've is. been relentlessly teasing her it's about a, it. It's a caddy. And now you send me this. for you already. So. Uh, I bought it just because of the name <laughs> to try. And then as I, after I got it home, was looking at it, I was like, "Oh, this is two awesome New Orleans breweries." Nice. Yeah, so, Brewery uh, Tarot yeah, has yeah. great, great stuff. Right, and Nola's a great brewery as well. So mm-hmm. we'll also be sampling a Copita Reposado Tequila from Mexico. So we're looking forward to doing our sampling for the week. Our uh, cigar sampling, of course, was done before the show since we're in the studio. So that. Begs the question, Ian, have you smoked anything interesting lately? Why, yes, I did. I uh, So when we had, um, well, I think last, when we went on and saw um, Nimish. Patel, yes. Patel. Oh, no, not Patel, Nimish Desai of Rocky Nimish Patel. Desai, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm yeah. blanking on that. I don't know why. He's a part of the Patel family, but he, his last uh, name is He Desai. laid on us a few of the uh, Rocky Patel cigars, and I smoked one the other day that is basically a chocolate candy bar. Wow. Of a cigar. Oh, wow. Uh, I'm going to describe this cigar in the best way I know how. First off, dark brown wrapper. I had the, um, it was the uh, Robusto size. Mm-hmm. Um, dark, oily brown wrapper. Beautiful purple la- label is the private seller selection. Yeah. I think you got one too. I don't know mm-hmm. if you smoked it yet. Mm-hmm. I think it's still um, in the humidor. But be ready for this. Yeah. So it starts off, and it is 
big and wonderful and delicious. The minute you light it, it's this big, wonderful, sweet, chocolatey kind of mocha cigar kind Rocky's of thing. Rocky's done it again, apparently. And the more you smoke this, the more mocha and sweet it gets until you actually feel like you're having s'mores next to a campfire. Oh, man. Like, that's what the cigar tastes like. For a it's cigar, like hot that's hot chocolate pretty, yeah. and s'mores next to a campfire. Wow. Is the flavors I had going on in my mouth. This thing was amazing. I and can't it wait. smoked brilliant. Like, this yeah. is... If you want a cigar for someone who goes, hmm, I don't like a cigar that, it, it, you know, is one dimensional or just like a regular cigar. This thing, without being an infused cigar or any of that other stuff, mm -hmm. this was just a chocolate bomb. Wow, chocolate espresso. I mean, it was amazing. It had just enough of the, the uh, uh, smoke and the traditional cigar in it to keep it, you know, grounded. I I smoked it until it burned my fingers pretty much. It I'm is going to give this cigar. Yeah. Price I'm going to give this a solid six, six and a half. Yeah. And it's because, not a cheap cigar. No, because, it's not yeah. a cheap cigar. But it was so good, I, it left me wanting more. It's like it's like I just ran out of chips and I wanted one more. <laughs> <You know? laughs> the Doritos thing. <laughs> yeah. You know, supposedly there's some sort of uh, chemical in Doritos that causes you to crave another one. I read that somewhere. I can get behind that conspiracy on the internet. theory. And you know everything you read on the internet is true. Absolutely. So. <laughs> Absolutely. As I get older, I just subscribe to more and more conspiracy theory Oh, things. yes. It's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. Well, I had a Rocky Patel cigar this week as well. However, <coughs> it was the cigar that I chose to smoke for my Super Bowl cigar, and my team lost. So I just really don't have the heart yeah, thank you. I appreciate your uh, I appreciate your sympathy. Uh, my team lost, so I, I just I was like, and I'm not reviewing it on the show. It was good. That's all I'll say. But I do want to talk about. Yeah, thank you, thank you. You 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 know, it's uh, everyone who everyone uh, they hate us because they ain't us is what they okay. is, is what they say. So I want to talk but about your lose. cigar really quickly. Yes. Um, you posted that you were going to smoke that after halftime. I actually had that one set aside and smoked it for halftime, and I didn't review it today because I figured you were going to review it. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> I, I I'm glad you reviewed the one that you did, by the way, because uh, I, I have to figure out which of my uh, game rituals. I have to get rid of because my team didn't win the game, right? So it's either either I can't smoke the twentieth during a game anymore, or I have to put on my jersey at a different time before the game starts, or I have to not have my dog Gracie wear the Patriots sweater that I got. One of those things screwed it up. I mean, you know, it gets complicated because you could just shift all those things one side. Yeah. So you could like you could wear the sweats and then um, smoke the cigar at the beginning of the. Uh, yeah, at the beginning of the uh, the game, yeah. and then have Gracie wear the jersey. I would look pretty ridiculous. Or you could in, just keep in going the, in a yeah, circle yeah, like yeah. that until you find the right combination. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will tell you, I was going to talk about that cigar, but we didn't win, so um, so I'm not going to talk about that cigar. <laughs> I'm going to talk instead about uh, something that I smoked actually yesterday. Uh, it was the Camacho Power Band Robusto. Comes in a silver tube, like a lot of the Camachos are, are tubos now. And it's made with an Ecuadorian Habana 2000 wrapper, a San Andreas Negrito binder, and then Honduran, Nicaraguan, and Dominican fillers, including lots of Ligero tobacco. This is a bomb of a cigar. The pre light was rich and promising. Uh, this is, I, I actually wrote this down from the cigar label. It's designed to feel the rush of adrenaline force of acceleration, and release of endorphins that you would feel from riding a motorcycle. That's what this power band refers to. And apparently the word power band refers to, and I'm not a motorcycle guy, but apparently it, it refers to that moment in the acceleration of the motorcycle when it's performing at its optimum. Am I getting that right? Yep. Yeah. You, okay. So, so anyway, that's what power band apparently means. So it was a powerful cigar from the first puff, but interestingly enough, not overpowering. I was kind of expecting that based on what I read on the band, uh, but it wasn't. It was, it was strong, but not too strong. Peppery, very peppery. Lots of wood and apple fruit uh, notes. It burned well, which was nice to see from a Camacho because they We've really went through. With them yeah, they really went through some construction issues for a while. The pepperiness got more aggressive as the cigar smoked, but I did like it overall. A pretty good cigar, but it's an eleven dollar stick, mm, and it's a thick. robusto, and it's good. But I've had more enjoyable eight dollar and even quite frankly five dollar uh, robustos. Wow. So price to quality, I'm going to give it a four. At eight bucks, I'd give it a five and a half. But at eleven, I'm um, just 
I'm, I'm going to give it a four. That's like, that's the top end of premium right Well, there. it really is. Yeah. Uh, this is going to be compared. And it's a Robusto. It's not an $11 big long cigar. It's $11 Robusto. So uh, I, I felt like it was good, but maybe not quite worth the price. So, all right. We'll be back. We have lots of tasting to do, plus uh, the evils of smoking cigars. We'll tell you why and maybe how to protect yourself. Coming up, it's the <laughs> Smoking and Toasting. <laughs> Just looks like a ski mask with no mouth cut out. <laughs> I don't know why that popped into my head. That seems ridiculous. Oh, what's up, Facebook Live? We are so happy you're here. It is so wonderful to know you are watching. And we are ready. To do some tasting. What are you tasting first? The Harpoon Fresh Tracks Harpoon Spring Fresh Ale. Tracks. And then the brown, and then the Caddy Wumpus. So scooch over like this, it looks like oh. I'm going right out of the bottle there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm moving the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> man, 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 in here. Oh, I need to look in my notes from last week because I'm. Yeah, Rocky Patel Private Cellar. I want more of those. Did I talk about the last week? Did I talk about the best beer in America according to Beer Connoisseur? It was the top sale Sour Blondale. We talked about that, didn't we? I remember that, yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Pretty, sure. Recording are coming in pretty, low. pretty low on Facebook Live? No, not Facebook Live, on Adobe. So I'm going to knock down, I think, Dallas headphones. Okay. High. And bring the whole. Uh, and bring the mains up. Okay. Very good. Having fun with the sound. Yeah. Now that's definitely a lot check, check. less that's... volume in my phones. There you go. So there we go. That's better. That's fine. Ooh. Yeah. You can bring my phones down a little bit now, please. All right. Check, check. One, two. Check, check. One, check, two. Check. That's fine. I'm good. Thank you. Oh, wow. It sounds like I'm clipping now. Yeah. Check, check. check. One, two. He's pretty loud. Check. <laughs> Yeah, and now now I could use just a touch more phones for me. Okay, tell me now. <clears throat> Better, thank you. <clears throat> oh yeah, yeah. Turn him turn him down on the board so he's not coming in so loud, and then turn his uh, headphones up so that he hears himself too loud. Yeah, I I could definitely use a little more headphones. Little it's more a trick check, I do with guitar players when I'm running check sound. Is it I put them two. in the mix like way too loud out of the monitor before yeah. they even get their amp on. And then you bring them down. Uh, and then they turn their amp on and they're like, oh! Give me just a little more headphones, a little more. Check one, two. Check it's one, two. Much. Check one, two. I know this is fascinating, Facebook Live. I apologize. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check one, two. I'm still not getting it. Check one, two. Check. Is that me? Check one, two. Check You're one, two. turning check me one, up. Yeah. Oh, that's that, why. Yeah, that yeah. Insane. You've got yeah. mine just cranked yeah, I'm, all I'm crazy still, now. I'm still not quite. There, that's me. That's me. Check it one, two. That's better. Thank you. <laughs> And then put mine way back down, way back down, way back down. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Be more aggressive with it, please. Down, 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 down. Are you turning the same one? There it goes. Now that's go. good. Look right there. All right, perfect. Here we go. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Engineers right. these days. Yeah, it's the wheels of steel, I'm telling you. <clears throat> Ready when you are. Oh, do I have the opener? Yeah, there it is. Okay, good. I'll be pouring some beers. Welcome back to Smoking and Toasting. It's show number 75, and we are brought to you by B&B Butchers and Restaurant at 1814 Washington Ave in Houston and in the shops at Clear Fork in Fort Worth. Much love to our buddy Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. When are we going to see him again? Jeremiah, Yeah, we, we you want never some call, you never write. We want some bacon, brother. <laughs> we don't love Jeremiah, we just love the bacon. Email. Yeah, yeah, right. There that, what does that even mean anymore? No, no. I'm not sure. This, <laughs> I don't know what this means. Like, uh, I don't know what this means. I've been watching uh, Gotham uh, on uh, Fox. Yeah. Uh, well, I actually been watching it on Netflix, but um, it's set back in the days before Bruce Wayne becomes Batman, so he's still young, and so it's set like in the past, but not that far in the past. And it's just so funny watching them all use the flip phones. The They've got cell phones, phone. but it's the flip phones. <laughs> I had a, uh, what did I have? I had a flip phone. Yeah, yeah, I had a flip phone. I thought I was Captain Kirk, you know. 
I'm an enterprise. Uh, so cigar festivals are about to unleash themselves upon the uh, lucky uh, smoking populace of the United States. <clears throat> so I thought I'd tell you about a few of them, and you can go Google the ones that are near you and uh, and find out what it what it takes. The Underground Cigars NFG 18 in Fort Worth, Texas, is the 9th through the 11th of March. It is uh, described as the largest boutique show in Texas, and it's a three-day extravaganza with 16 different manufacturers, cigar maker meet and greets, a fish fry, all kinds of Bloody Mary Sunday brunch, uh, all kinds of fun stuff, and it is from the Underground Cigar Shop and Lounge in Fort Worth is the people who put this Now, morning. wouldn't it be terrible if we had a road trip to the B&B yeah, it would, on it that would, Thursday? That would just be awful, wouldn't it? And then we were stuck there for the weekend. Yeah, at a had, cigar and had to participate in the cigar, cigar festival. On March 23rd through the 25th, it's Stogie Fest in Jacksonville, Florida. It's hosted by Aroma Cigar and Lounge, the seventh annual Stogie Fest, which is dubbed, I don't know if this is true or not, but they refer to it as the largest annual cigar and tobacania, tobacania gathering in northern Florida. Tobacania, did I say that right? T O B A C A N N I A. Tabacania. Tabacania. I'm sure I'm pronouncing Tabacania. it. Tabacania. April the 4th through the 9th is the Smokeout 2018 in Las Vegas, Nevada. The 19th year for a five-day not-for-profit event for cigar and pipe studs, bikers, and leathermen. Uh, so Smokeout. I love the name of that. Show, pool, and cocktail parties, dinners, cigar crawl, scotch and cigar social, motorcycle fun, and a poker party. Pretty fun, huh? April 14th. I, I don't even know what a cigar crawl is, but I kind of want, I, I like I want to be idea. a part of well, that. Well, I know what a pub crawl is. Yeah. So maybe for a cigar crawl, you, you know, go to different cigar places and have a different cigar at each one. And I that's know. a time commitment there. Love that. See, <laughs> right. that, that, that's amazing. If, if we don't get to go to this, let's just do one of our own. Right. Let's just do it. <laughs> uh, on April 14th, Houston, Texas, the Texas Cigar Festival, hosted by Sirius Cigars, which is now Casa de Monte Cristo. Uh, and it is uh, this has been held there since 1960, believe it or not. Uh, ticket holders will receive an impressive gift bag with cigars, meet industry celebrities, and eat and drink to their contentment. Both VIP and general admission seats are available. Go to CasaDeMonteCristo.com for is information. It's April 14th. Ooh. So let me just give you a few others. Lake Harmony, Pennsylvania is Cigar Fest. This is the one hosted by Cigars International. This one is supposed to be one of the biggest cigar events in the world. Uh, it is May the 3rd through the 6th. On May 19, Hoboken, New Jersey, smoking on the Hudson. A cigar cruise around Manhattan, hosted by Casa de Monte Cristo, in conjunction with JR Cigars. The Lone Star Cigar Bash in Halotas is June the 2nd from Fink Cigars. Uh, June 6th through the 10th, the Napa Valley Jazz Getaway in Napa, uh, California, which includes five days of jazz, wine, food, and cigars. Smoking in the Carolinas in Burlington, North Carolina, on June the 8th. The Rocky Patel Cigar Cruise is June the 11th through the 16th. It's called Shipwrecked 2018, <laughs> and it's a one-of-a-kind event uh, based at uh, Capa de Campo off the Caribbean coast of La Romana, Dominican Republic. So, And I'm sure Rocky and the family will all be there, so that should be fun. Uh, uh, June 19th, the Wine, Spirits, and Cigar Festival in Washington, D.C. Uh, July 20, uh, 13th through the 17th, the International Premium Cigar and Pipe Retailers Trade Show, or IPCPR, in Las Vegas is a, is a big deal. The Brew City Cigar Festival in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, on August 18th. And on August 25th, the Rocky Mountain Cigar Festival in Broomfield, Cali Broomfield Cali uh, Colorado. And there is one more on August 25th, the Cigar Bourbon and Beer Festival in Fredericksburg, Virginia. That sounds like fun. Are you fun ready for a road fun. trip, my friend? <laughs> I, I, I think those all sound good to me. So just so you know, the one that's uh, uh, here in Houston is pretty close to my birthday. Nudge, yeah. nudge, wink, oh, wink. Oh, uh, well, it's good for you to bring that just, up. I'm, I'm so happy. Just letting you know I that. suppose you'd be hoping for a VIP ticket. Not I, You know, I was just mentioning that, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. just yeah. in case you were keeping that you know, well, month thank you for, open to celebrate. Thank you for bringing that up <laughs> i appreciate speaking it. of which mm -hmm. oh that sound yeah it wasn't as loud as i wanted it to be but that was popping the top on a harpoon fresh tracks described as a bright floral hoppy spring pale ale now i know a bit about harpoon because of uh the years that i spent living in boston and uh, harpoon has had a spring beer which was more of a uh, like a a a lighter, I almost want to say it's just a lighter ale, sort of like a, 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 a an amber, perhaps. 
Uh, this looks the same color as that did, but I have a feeling that it's going to be much different uh, in taste based on the way it is described. It's described as bright golden with citrus and pine notes, a clean, light, and ready for spring ale. And then it says on the uh, on the bottle, hibernation be damned. Get outside and make some fresh tracks. Hooray for spring. So uh, I'll pass a little of this over to Adam on the wheels as well. <coughs> Excuse me. And we'll do, a, we'll do a little tasting here. First on the, on the nose, you get that citrus aroma right away. Uh, you can tell this is going to be one of those. The citrus is big. Yeah. You can tell this is going to be one of those. It's interesting that it's a pale ale and not an IPA. Uh, and Harpoon, of course, already produces you know, New England IPA styles. So it this smells like an IPA. It smells different. like a very summery, citrusy IPA, mm. if you ask me. But you know, it drinks a little bit differently. It drinks a little lighter and more refreshing. IPA usually has that heavier hop bottom to it. Uh, it says on the bo- on the um, on the bottle, our brewery parking lot can be a pretty good indication of the season. Some cars have ski pa- ski racks. Others are decked with bike racks. Some even have both. Spring here keeps us on our toes, so we're always ready. For anything Harpoon. that citrus, I think, translates very directly into um, lemon and grapefruit. Yeah, I like this a lot. The this grapefruit is, on the end is a nice addition. This is like right to this down the path for my palate. I like this. I could very see this as just yeah. a fantastic summer beer. Mm-hmm. The color is beautiful on it. What I like about it is it has the refreshingness that I usually look for in those summer sort of lighter beers, but it has a little more of the hop flavor to it uh, without. Without being bitter or making you feel, the, it reminds me a little of the Founders All Day IPA. Right, the level kind of, of carbonation on this as mm-hmm. well, yes. uh, is is there. It's carbonated, mm-hmm. it's present, but it's not over carbonated, so you don't mm-hmm. feel like you're drinking a little bit of it, and all of a sudden you have burp and everything else. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, the guys at Harpoon, and Harpoon is one of the one of a number of uh, breweries that are employee owned, but they've been that way uh, since. Um, much earlier than some of the uh, other breweries were even open, because this brewery's been around for a little while. And they're in uh, Boston and in Vermont as well. Uh, they have two different breweries. and uh, So you find them all over New England, but they've done a pretty good job of getting kind of like uh, kind of like Shiner has done. You can find Shiner, obviously, right. all over in Texas, but you can also find it just about anywhere you go. If you yeah? go, my brother lives in International Falls, Minnesota. Yes. Now, this is remote. Yes. Okay. The nearest mall... Is two and a half hours. That's actually a good thing. All right, <laughs> but you can go into <laughs> the yes. liquor store uh, that's not far from his house and find Shiner and find Shiner. Like yeah, Shiner's so gotten they've done, all over the place. They've, they've done a great done job a with, job with distribution. With their There's distribution, no question. Yes. and they make some damn good beer too. So, uh, but but Harpoon, I think uh, I, you know, they they were an early favorite for me. So I think I've told the story in the show before that it was the Harpoon IPA that sort of graduated me towards hoppier uh, beers. It was the one that really put me in that wow. Another category. interesting thing about this particular beer is uh, the aftertaste um, kind of goes away. It has a little bitter, a little yes. grapefruit. It goes away and then leaves this sweet, um, sweet malty kind of thing just laying yes. on the back of the tongue. One of the things Very that, interesting. that comes to my mind about this is that it's a hoppy beer that I could drink and still have a cigar because, as yeah. we talked about, the the hot bitterness can actually really interfere with yes. your enjoyment yes. of the cigar. But I think this one finishes so especially clean, especially if you have like a peppery cigar, right? The peppery and the and, bitter, and yeah. the hop the hop can kind of fight yeah. each other. Yeah, uh, but this finishes so clean and has a little bit of that citrus, uh, uh, sort of citrus and malt sort of finish to it that it uh, I think really would leave the palate receptive. So I'm I'll be for interested it. to try this. You're for it. I I'm love for that. It. See, uh, you're, uh, what, one of the things I love about you is I, that you, will take, the stand. you will take a stand. You will take a stand. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love that. Okay, coming up on the show, the evils of smoking cigars. We'll talk about that coming up in one of our next segments. Also, uh, still to come, we'll be tasting, although Ian has let out of the bag that he's tasted this before. I have tasted this before. Odell Brewing Company's, uh, I think it's their winter seasonal, uh, Settle Down Brown, but we still got our hands on some, even though the, the spring beers are coming out. I'll right? have to look it up, because I think the Settle Down Brown is actually a, a, a variation of their little sump mail, or it's the other way around. Well, a little something is from Lagunitas, isn't it? I think it is. Oh, no, I'm something, mixing something. my brands, aren't uh, I? Ah, yes. This is Odell, which is from Fort Collins, Colorado. Uh, let me so. go bash my head during the break well, here. That's okay, and we will take a break coming up, but uh, <laughs> we will also be tasting the Copita Reposado Tequila, and then, of course, 
Caddy Wampus, uh, the uh, brewery, um, the two breweries together, Nola and Brewery Turo. So that's a barrel aged sour stout. So I'm sure you're probably not going to like it, Ian. No, that's that's not doesn't up my sound alley like you. At all. Does not it? <laughs> even remotely. By the way, anybody out there working for Solo Cups, I need you guys to hit me up. I have a blue Solo oh, you, Cup today. You, you went blue today, right? And I went well. I did this for a reason because there's that red Solo Cup song. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to stick that in everyone's head. Well, thank you. We thank you. Because if you for keep that. saying red Solo Cup, except that you've now said it twice. Well, if you keep saying red Solo Cup over yeah, and see, over again, this is uh, <laughs> damn it. Ian. But so I brought a blue one, so I won't get it stuck in my head. Yeah, well, thank you for that. Every time you pick the cup up, the and, blue Solo Cup. Yeah. But yes, so I need someone, uh, someone from Solo Cups to to get in touch with me. Yes, uh, because we go through a lot of cups on this show. Yes, we do. I mean, we we have a lot of tasters. We go through a lot of cups. So uh, a Solo Cup. Sponsorship will be a wonderful see, I'm thing. I'm not using a solo cup, but if we had a sponsor, but that's because you're protesting it right now because they're not sponsoring us. But if we had a sponsor, I would all of that's course right. be using that's a, right. a solo cup. So, all right, we'll take a break. <laughs> we'll be right back at Smoking and Toasting, and uh, it's show number seventy-five. Oh, this job's pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Germ? I see you watching. Mm. <laughs> I got friends rock chiming on, in there. Mm, rock on. And what is your next selection, sir? Settle down, Brown. Settle down, Brown. Yeah. Why did I confuse those two? Oh, Hello. because it's yeah. Because uh, Odell, Odell always has because oh, it's brown style. sugar. Yes, right. Because a little something something is a brown. Because and they have something else. They have a brown sugar. They have a little something something. They had a something else. They have, they have a brown a, sugar ale. They have a little something. The something. brown sugar is what I was thinking. Not mm-hmm. settle down brown. Okay. So I wonder, have you then had this? I have not had that. Oh, so, so I lied. Now I'm, now I'm even more excited. I lied. Now I'm even more excited. All right, the evils of smoking cigars. What do you think of the beer, Red? It's tasty. Yeah, it is. Isn't it? Summer... Yeah. I'm for it. Yeah, it's a great summer I'm beer. I'm for it. I love that. Outside in the sun, sipping on that's nice. It's a good flavor. Get down, Brown, or settle down, Brown. All right, I'm ready when you are. <clears throat> cool. The settle down, Brown. You're listening to Smoking and Toasting, or watching, in the case of our friends on Facebook Live. And by the way, let me just mention this, because there's so many different ways now to get the show, and thank you for pointing. Um, there's so many different ways to get the show now. We uh, do Facebook Live every time we do the show, so we're available on Facebook Live. There are some weeks where a few people share it, and there's some weeks where thousands of people share it. We love those weeks that are thousands. Those are our yes. favorite weeks. Uh, but we encourage you, if you are watching or listening on Facebook Live, uh, to um, to to share it with your friends. Or even if you're at work and you can't really like you know watch it right at, at the moment that it's live, and you can watch it later, you can see the Facebook Live video, uh, go ahead and hit that share. We appreciate it. And Absolutely. Go to the Smoking and Toasting Facebook page. And then underneath where it says Smoking and Toasting is Live, you just hit that little arrow where it says share, and then it'll share it to your uh, friends. And we appreciate you doing that. That's how that, we get our name out there, That everybody. helps us grow, and we appreciate it. Uh, we're also available on uh, Apple uh, Music Podcast. Uh, we're available uh, for those of you of the Android persuasion. We are available on uh, the Google Play uh, That's me. system. That's you. You're an Android. You switched over. You're an I Android switched. guy now. Yep. You, uh, you switched. Uh, and then we also are available on YouTube. Uh, you can get us at SoundCloud, too, because that's sort of where the show lives is mm-hmm. in SoundCloud. Uh, and we have a SoundCloud page. But you can also get us on YouTube, which is a fun way to be able to watch the video. So, so yeah, if you can't find us, you're actually not typing and smoking and toasting into any yeah. device. Right, or smoking, apostrophe, and <laughs> toasting, apostrophe. Right. Uh, so, <laughs> so try those things. But, yeah, we're, we're findable is the point. And if you're not able to watch the show live, it usually takes until – like a little bit later in the afternoon uh, or so of the day that the show airs, and it'll be up on, uh, on I, And I just want to point out, too, 74 shows ago when we did our first one, which yes. is now available on every media we just said. Yes. We didn't have all that available. No, we didn't. We, we had, were just a podcast. We were just and, a yeah. podcast, and we were just on the Radio Brave, mm-hmm. and so we had to do it at specific times, and, mm-hmm. and it was only aired at specific times. And then, uh, and then with the event of the podcast becoming so popular, we made it available 
anywhere, anytime. Yes. I love and that's, that. That's exciting because now you can kind of control when uh, you want to watch it. But we appreciate you sharing it because that's, that's what helps other people that you know that might be interested in this know about it. And we, that we like talking to people like that. So, the, Plus it makes you look cool. Uh, a new poll is out. The surprising state that produces the most craft beer. It is not California. Which may surprise some people. Is, is it Texas just due to a it is, sheer, sheer it, size? It is not Texas. No. What? It is not Texas. So you'd expect California to have the most craft breweries, and they do. They are number one with the most craft breweries. And Washington is number two in Colorado, and then New York, and then Oregon. But basically, based on amount of beer per capita, which is how this poll was done, Vermont is Vermont. the number one state of craft brew, craft brews produced per capita, or actually even gallons consumed per capita. Uh, Vermont uh, is 19.8 gallons per capita for the number one spot. Number two at 12.9 is Pennsylvania. And I will mention, by the way, Yangling is included in that Pennsylvania tub, oh, yeah. which actually surprises me that they're not number one. Because Yangling, even though it's a craft beer, because it's not owned by one of the big guys, right. it's huge. I it's mean, huge. It's, it's enormous. That uh, is, by the way, the oldest operating brewery in the United yes, States. Yes, it is. At number three, this blew my mind, Alaska. What? Alaska. Yep. I guess it has to be per capita. What else well, are you Well, per do? capita is part of it. Right. <laughs> like, because, what else is there to do? Because the population is not as large. But based on, a, a, you know, a, compared to the population uh, and what they're consuming, yeah. yeah they're going I mean, you got to figure, okay, if me and you were living in, in Alaska right now, um, the conversation would go something like this. Cruz, what are you going to do this winter? I'm going to watch my beer sit there and get good. <laughs> You're right. And and uh, I can tell you from living in Boston and having some parties in the winter that I would just take the beer outside and stick it in the snow. Oh, yeah. And it's the perfect way to you do it. You save a lot on ice. Perfect way to do it. You don't have to buy all that ice. Uh, here in Texas, we buy a lot of ice. A lot of yes, ice. It's it's what we do. Uh, number four is Oregon, which that doesn't, it doesn't surprise me that they made – the right. top five, that's a pretty trendy hipster sort of state. And Colorado does come in on the list at number five. So craft beer um, is um, – actually, it even says in the article here, Yangling's inclusion is probably what keeps Pen uh, Pennsylvania uh, up on the tops in the total number of craft beer produced each year, some 3.9 million uh, ahead of uh, second place California at 3.3 .3 million barrels. So just in total barrels produced – Pennsylvania, thanks to wow, uh, thanks to uh, and Yingling's uh, gotten a uh, bigger one. distribution in the last few years, I believe. Well, too. they East, are now, a lot of East Coast uh, distribution. We can't get them in Texas, no, but when no. I was vacationing with the family in Florida, you get in Yingling Florida all day, man. Yeah. And and we had, in fact, that was where I snagged the Yingling Light, which I brought back for the um, uh, Light Beer uh, Blind Taste Test 2.0. Right, and it was my favorite number one. The other guys uh, didn't like it as much. Well, you know, I like their name. lager. Their uh, porter is outstanding as I well. I haven't had the Yingling, their Yingling porter. porter is outstanding. Yeah, that, would be, that would be something to taste. Speaking of tasting, it's time to taste some brown. The Settle Down Brown from Odell Brewing Company. And we established, by the way, during the break, you heard us talking about this if you're on Facebook Live, that this is not the beer Ian was thinking. No, it's not. So you have not had this. I have not. Well, well. I was wrong, sir. I was wrong. Um, maybe my mic has turned down a little bit more today. It doesn't feel like I'm getting the same not getting uh, the pop out of same it sound effect that I usually did. Odell, I think, is a fabulous uh, brewing company. They are out of Colorado, Fort Collins, Colorado. Ninety I shilling. And uh, yes, oh, that's ninety that shilling. So good. That it's beer is so great good. Says in the winter months, uh, somewhere between work hard and play hard, uh, there's a moment that naturally seems to occur. A moment where you can sit back. It's kind of hard for me to read this because the print is so small. Sit back and relax with a good friend and, well, settle in. And it's moments like these that inspired us to create Settle Down Brown, the American brown that has such a rich malt flavor and complex tropical fruit and caramel notes. So this is a seasonal from Odell. And uh, I, I'm, you know... I didn't used to be as big of a fan of, of, of browns as I have found myself to be lately. You know, these days I'm enjoying uh, a couple of brown ales, and and you know what's what's the one that's so popular that everybody uh, the brown that everybody um, that you can find almost almost anywhere. Do you know the one I'm talking about? 
Uh, Are you talking about Newcastle? Not, Newcastle. Oh, Thank yeah, you. yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I used to just, that would be okay. I would drink it if I didn't have, you know, anything else uh, available at a party or what. These days, I just love it. Newcastle's a great beer. It's, it really is, really is a great beer. I, uh, so. uh, in, my, in my roaring 20s, yes. um, I used to hang out at a bar over in the Montrose area, and, um, and they had Newcastle on tap. Oh, nice. Which I would drink only if they were out of the St. Arnold Brown Ale. On oh, tap. so you like the St. Arnold Brown, do you? On tap, it's mm-hmm. outstanding. Yeah. Well, this obviously is not on tap, as I spill a little <laughs> bit by bumping into the microphone. Uh, this is obviously not on tap, but it is the Settle Down Brown from Odell, and I will tell you, not unexpectedly, but malt on the nose big time. Big time. Well, when you mm. see that rich, dark, uh, molassesy kind of color to it. You just expect that malt profile to Man, happen. This beer is delicious. This is like it's almost like a malt milkshake. With this with, is with uh, very similar. Um, if you've ever had an actual malt milkshake, that malt powder mm-hmm. that they use mm-hmm, mm-hmm. when they accidentally don't mix it up right, and you get a clump of it. Yes, and it's a it's like a little treat. Yes. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. a lot like that. <laughs> well, it's got a little more. Uh, like I, I think about the um, the brown ale that we were mentioning, the Newcastle, and and I think of that as as sort of a thinner viscosity wise. This is a little bit thicker, not like a, you know, not like a porter necessarily, but but it's a little bit a little bit thicker, a little bit bigger mouth, mouth feel. Yeah. It has a uh, you know today must be like the day of carbonation, or maybe mm-hmm. it's just me, but the carbonation is right on too. It's not as much carbonation as most beer, right? But then again, a lot of darker ales mm-hmm. don't, have don't have that, nor much. do they yes, need that right. as well. Mm-hmm. No, that's they don't absolutely need that right. Christmas, but it has enough to keep it interesting, and it sits on and under the tongue really nicely. I'm pretty impressed with this. Settle Down Brown from Odell. I picked this up at Specs, but I assume it's relatively easy to find. Odell Brewing Company out of Fort Collins. This is a 6.3% uh, alcohol by volume. Nice. Here. All right, so... Well, right, for, so, for my taste, I'd call that sessionable. So the evils of smoking cigars. Today's discussion topic. This I I ran across a great column, and I really enjoyed reading this from Ed Goldman. All right, uh, so the, I saw this in the show notes, and yes. I have no idea what this is about. So I'm I'm just as newbie as you guys are to the evils of. Well, Ed Goldman is a columnist in the Sacramento Business Journal, and he wrote what I thought was a very entertaining column, and I wanted to share some of the thoughts from it with you. Um, why, he asked, do movies always depict the bad guys as cigar smokers, or vice versa? In countless westerns, the guy smoking the cigar is the evil town banker who's about to foreclose on Widow Wilson's half-acre cauliflower farm because ever since her husband was killed in a gunfight with one of the banker's hired men who accused him of cheating at cribbage or something, uh, she's been neither able to make the monthly mortgage payment nor, of course, uh, bring in a wagon load of cauliflower to the town's farmer's market. And while he's not an evil banker, and I'm reading this from Ed Goldman's column, who it should be noted is always seen smoking what appears to be a very fine cigar as a further insult to his impoverished customers, he is the hired killer, uh, chewing on a cheroot, you know, one of those little cigars. So, so the evil banker is always smoking the big, fat, expensive cigars, but the more, like, everyday man, the killer... Is smoking those little cheer roots like Clint also, Eastwood smokes in in also uh, Boss some of the Hog, Westerns, right? <coughs> Boss Hog, that's right. Uh, and uh, but he had a cool car. You know, I mean, the Longhorns on the Cadillac was and pretty Ed, awesome. Ed Goldman points out neither the farmer or any of the shock church going town folk are ever cigar smokers in these in these movies. They don't even chew the occasional stick of dentine chewing gum, although it'd make for a, a delicious break in the day. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> equating cigar smoking and evil doing isn't just for Westerns. The Godfather films, you never see the title character, Vito Corleone. You never see him with a cigar, but uh, the rival dons, the bad, bad guys, are always smoking a cigar. Always. Huh. You know, I watched the Daredevil series on Netflix, and, uh, you know, the Kingpin smokes a cigar. Yeah. Like, yeah. there's a lot of cigar smoking going on. And then he goes on uh, to point out that even George Pappard on the A-Team, who smoked a cigar on the A-Team, he was kind of a bad, good guy, if you think about it. Right. You know, he, he had, that, had that edge to him, uh, as it were. The anti-hero-ish. So, right. so this is what this is about. The evils of smoking cigars is basically that's how we're depicted. We who smoke cigars are always depicted as the bad guys in the stories. You never hear about the hero huh. walked out chomping a cigar and saved the day. So we need to lean on producers to yes. use their cigar uh, smokers for good, not for that, evil. That's right. Because, because that's the thing. With great power 
and we're going to co-opt this for, gar for cigars. With great cigars comes great responsibility. And I choose to use my cigars well, well said, for good. <laughs> <laughs> it's smoking and toasting. It's show number 75. And uh, thank you, Ed Goldman. By the way, uh, uh, Google Ed Goldman and uh, cigars, and you'll find this article. It's a very, nice. very enjoyable read. And we're smoking and toasting, and we'll be right back to taste us some I wonder if people tequila. see me as evil when I'm smoking a cigar. That's funny, I never thought of that. <laughs> Sinuses are starting to. Hey, Facebook, you get to hear about my sinuses. They're starting to act up all of a sudden. <laughs> I know that's not very fun. We'll be back momentarily with your regularly scheduled uh, Smoking and program. <laughs> that brown ale's good. Uh, you know, you got to expect that from Odell. Yeah, they really. I don't think I've had one of theirs I haven't liked. I enjoy that uh, 90 shilling. I'm going to spill a little water down here. Yeah, is that what you call it, 90 shilling? Yeah, 90 shilling is, is fantastic. Uh, yeah, those guys got it going on. They also, did they do the, are they the ones with the APA? Uh, no, that is, yes! Yeah, yes, so the drum so I, roll APA. Actually brought one of those from, a, yeah, that's a great Because we had that on the show before. Yes. That was really good. It. Yeah, I threw that one in just They have that over, uh, they had that on tap over at, um, at the New Potato. I uh, found it on tap at, um, I'll think of it, um, and it was delicious. No, no, I have to go back and visit the new place. Awesome. Mm. All right. Up next, Copita. And now for something completely there different. There is a shot glass in here, but I don't think you can get it out in any way. It's not like so the, it's more just for decoration. It's not like the, the popcorn was a little... Yeah. Popcorn, <laughs> yeah. When you're done with the bottle, you can, like, smash it and then drink out of the bottle. Maybe, yeah. Maybe if you smash it, you can... <laughs> I don't know. That's, that's a good question. I don't know. I wonder, maybe you're supposed to get it out. You know, we'll, just, we'll have to discuss this. I don't know. Maybe that's like, uh, like uh, tying a... Uh, Ah, thank you. I think it oh, did you already get it? Just got it. This is this is my new knife, by the way. Let's see if I can oh. get a camera view. It has this awesome carbon fiber handle, and that's an ugly sweater pattern on it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I actually stole this from my brother. I didn't really steal it. I traded for it. You won it in a gunfight. <laughs> in a gunfight. I traded for it. I'm just saying I don't have any Blantons left. You're the, you're the kind of person who would win a knife in a gunfight. <laughs> right, gunfight for your knife, sir. Not for your life, but for your knife. What was that in uh, Harlem Nights? You won't shoot me in the toe. <laughs> <laughs> Are you letting that bottle kick your butt? I am, but it's now. I've now officially won. So remember, it's not about, it's not about the blows traded. It's about who officially. Right. <laughs> in the in the end, I'm like I'm like one of those fighters that like looks like he's getting destroyed, but he's wearing the other guy down. Right. And then late in the fifth round, boom. Yep. You know, I mean, you do realize though, in the first Rocky, he didn't win. Yeah. There's that there's that whole scene where he goes in and he's like, I can't win. He's talking to Adrian. He's like, I can't win. Adrian, I can win. <laughs> but he can go the distance, and that was the battle. You know, I'm not sure if I can open this without a wine opener. There's not enough cork here to pull. I'm going to have to go get a... I'm glad I did this before we started the <laughs> Do you have a wine opener? I think I have one of those uh, little portable ones. Uh, there you go. Cruise on the hunt for the wine opener. Yeah, just arr. ah, my younger days, things I would have done. 
<laughs> Bye, Cruz. I'm going to now say a phrase that I never thought I'd hear myself say. I hope I don't cork the tequila. <laughs> well, I was going to say, if, if nothing else, you can just shove it down in there. Yeah. I think I can manage this, but boy. <laughs> Usually I with tequila, it's the other way around. I know. <laughs> right? did, you, did you eat the worm? No, but I ate some of the cork. <laughs> should be able to pull this. I know I should save this for air, but I don't want to struggle with it too much, so fuck. Uh, all right, well, I didn't cork it. <laughs> but now I smell like tequila. You smell delicious, <laughs> sir. <laughs> delicious. All right, here we go. I'm just going to say, if I started a list of things that I have smelled like in my... Life tequila wouldn't be the worst. Oh, wouldn't be the worst. Okay, <laughs> I didn't know quite where you were going with that, but I'm I'm right there with you, brother. All right, I'm ready when you are. <laughs> it would be on the list. Yes. It would definitely make the list. Somehow. Yes. <laughs> Welcome back to Smoking and Toasting. It's a program that's all about craft beer, fine spirits, this. and hand rolled cigars. Um, this is show number 75, and we're brought to you by B&B Butchers and Restaurant at 1814 Washington Ave in Houston and in the shops at Clear Fork in Fort Worth. And uh, so our, our tasting item for this, uh, for this segment is the Copita Tequila Reposado. And uh, during, the, uh, during the break, uh, although Facebook Live got to, you know, uh, see how awkward I can be, um, <laughs> the, uh, I was... I was Looking at the bottle and discovered, oh, this is a really different kind of tequila because it actually you have to actually open it like you open a wine bottle. It's got a cork in the top, but it doesn't have one of those, you know, tops that you can grab and pull the cork out by hand. I also want to point out that the bottle was obviously designed by someone who was uh, drinking said tequila because yep. the the shot glass is inside the, the bottle. Shot glass inside the bottle, just like that. And I don't know whether. You're supposed to finish the tequila, break the bottle, and get the shot glass out. Or Which seems you... to be a little after the fact, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you know? you know? And what like if now I don't need this? What if my next bottle of tequila is not Copita Tequila Reposado? Maybe what you just I... have to get one bottle ahead. Well, as I was uh, attempting to open, and I decided to do this during the break, so the awkwardness of it wouldn't come over during the show. Uh, because I, all I had was this little plastic top. So uh, we didn't get the calming open. and wonderful uh, cork pop. A cork pop, yeah. Uh, but you did. But here me, we go. Let me let me see you if did I can give just me... do that for you. Okay. Boom. See, that's so much better than what actually happened. Because what actually <laughs> happened was I pulled the cork out, and there was a small sound. But then there was me dropping the f bomb and uh, <laughs> spilling tequila all over myself. So now I smell like tequila. But you know what? I smell delicious. Yes. <laughs> so let's hope that this you smell tequila, agave-licious. Let's hope that this tequila tastes as good as I smell. <clears throat> I have not had the copita. I bought this this, uh, this this last week at Specs. It is from uh, Mexico, and it is 100% agave, as you would expect, and 40% alcohol by volume. This is the reposado, though, not the añejo. So, uh, so it'll be interesting to taste because you know uh, the the aging in tequila reposado is kind of the middle. And mm -hmm. then uh, uh, añejo is the is the top unless you go with the extra añejo. Uh, by the way, I saw a bottle of the extra añejo from mm -hmm. Patron. Two hundred and thirty dollars. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I, I, it's not that I wouldn't pay it, but what scares me about paying that much is what if you get it and the copita tequila reposado is better. You know what I mean? <laughs> like what if it's what if it's just okay? Right, because when you pay two hundred and thirty dollars for a bottle of tequila, you want you want to have that yeah, one it, that you're going to keep in your amazing, bar for right? a long time. <laughs> you're only going to bring out for very special occasions with good friends, you know. Well, you got to think. Okay, so up to up to say about a hundred dollars for a bottle of anything, right? 
whether it's you scotch never know. It could be wildly sure. It could be wildly I've had thirty dollar bottles things. that are better than eighty dollar bottles. Right, but but you gotta hope that once you break the hundred dollar mark, you gotta be at least this good. You would hope. Yes. You know, you got to be at least this good. You would hope. Hundred dollars comes in here. Over a hundred comes in here, and you got to be at least this good, no matter what. Well, I'll tell you. Since we are open, and I'm now trying to remember how much this cost, but I want to say it was right around thirty dollars. So it wasn't expensive, although you can certainly get a reposado in the high teens to the twenties, depending on what you buy. I want to say like the um, the. What is the one I'm thinking of? The is it the Sousa reposado? Sousa. Yeah. Uh, it's a pretty good reposado for about eighteen dollars. You know the. Uh, so it just depends on it. Just depends on what you're getting and and what you're tasting. But um, uh, anyway, a little pricey maybe for a reposado, but not ridiculous. So uh, I'm very curious to see how this one goes and what it tastes like. I do already know what it smells like because it smells like my shirt. So uh, uh, not not that the tequila smells like my shirt, but more that my shirt smells. I just, like I just the want tequila. to point out where, where so. do you where do you do your laundry? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and how can you get them to do yours? <laughs> right. Oh, uh, I will say this is wonderful. I just on smell the nose. like smell like tequila. Or wait, no, does that smell like shirt? Yeah, I will say this is wonderful on the, the nose. lines are blurred there. Yes, they are. They are very blurry, and it's they might so be even sweet more blurry. smelling. It really is. It's it, very sweet smelling, and that surprises me a little for a reposado because you normally the sweetness comes from the aging and 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 what barrels it's potentially aged in. Uh, the uh, if it's aged in like oak barrels, some tequilas aged in silver barrels, some aged in in uh, in, in oak barrels, but. Usually that's what imparts the sweetness. So very interesting in a reposado to be smelling that kind of sweetness. And it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, and it's right up front. Like a lot of times too. when you smell tequila, you smell that agave right up front. You smell the uh you smell a lot of the uh even the liquor itself. You smell the alcohol up front. Uh, but this one is sweet, like right in your face kind of sweet. Wow. It's it's wow. It's wow. For a reposado tequila, if you told me this was an añejo, I would believe you. It's it's got a pretty good degree of smoothness for a reposado. It's got a, a bit of a burn to it, but it's a, a pleasant burn. Right. It's not, like not a bad burn kind of way. I mean, I've had I've had rums that had more burn than this. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's not. Now it's not like the Skelly. I'll bring up my favorite añejo in the world. <laughs> that's uh, that, pretty amazing. That's so smooth. It's like, is this really even tequila? Yeah. If it didn't taste kind of tequila-ish, you would really wonder <laughs> because it's so smooth. So it's not that smooth. But I got to tell you, this is quite good. Quite look at good. how uh, look at how the liquid even looks. It's it's kind of thick, mm -hmm. um, and and sits and holds onto the glass. It's got big legs in. Um, in mm -hmm. uh, uh, wine terms, in wine terms. So yes, it's got yes. a bit of oil that coats the mouth and leaves that flavor lingering in such a it nice way. It does have an oiliness to it, yeah. not, and, and that's not a bad thing. It's a, it's a good thing. Well, the oiliness, uh, I don't know if we talk about this all that often, but the oiliness, when you have a, a liquor that has that kind of oiliness to it, it really coats the mouth with flavor. It, yes. it lingers in the mouth and it coats it, the mouth with flavor. It has a and so instead of just getting the sort of alcohol burn, right, you get this flavor that kind of goes all over your taste. And buds. it generally has a warmer kind of feel to it overall versus more of a burning. Kind I'm of feel telling you, Ian, this is a good tequila. It's pretty round tasting. Yes, like round. Yes, and sweet. It has the round and, sweet uh, notes to it and. You can certainly get the agave. There's almost a butteriness to it. There's a buttery and a vanilla. Yes, uh, the vanilla, vanilla bean. And again, that generally comes from the aging in the oak mm -hmm. barrel. So to get that in a reposado, again, and the, I'm, and I'm the caramelized impressed. sugar kind of flavors mm -hmm. that you get too. Uh, what's funny is the agave is there, but it's not the most. It's not like on, like on a lot of them. It's so present, right? Like some, it's almost what you taste, no matter particularly what. Particularly blancos or reposados. Just have that very, and, and I can enjoy that flavor, but that very agave flavor going for them. I bet that makes a ridiculous margarita. I bet it does because it's got the sweetness to it already. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I bet that does make a ridiculous. So if you have a, a margarita mix that's not sweet, or you make a fresh margarita mix mm -hmm. that that doesn't have a lot of sweetness to it, which is my favorite. Uh, something like that's going to add the sweetness naturally and, and probably make it just outstanding. Wow. That's very, very good. I don't know that I would have predicted I would like it quite that much. I, I, was, I was sort of expecting it to be good, but like the type of thing where you go, this would be really good in margaritas, but I'll still go with something else for drinking it straight. This, yes, is, it, this is better than and some. Especially from, from a company. Here, you know, most companies, when you buy the gift set, you get the... 
the bottle and you get the shot glass beside it, not right. inside it. Right. <laughs> That's a very good point. <laughs> it's not as practical as some of the other gift sets, but, uh, but I'm yeah. teasing them because it's funny, but that's. <laughs> I kind of love it. The bottle looks awesome. Yeah, that's that's absolutely yeah. absolutely. Well, right. you know, the Milagro has that blown uh, on the inside of their glass. Has that blown uh, agave plant mm -hmm. that looks so awesome, especially when the light hits it. Well, uh, it's. I would recommend it very very highly. I'd give this, especially based on the price, I'd give this a very very strong. My up. wife's going to listen to this show. She's yep. probably watching it right now. She's going to listen to this show and she's going to be like, "I'm going to buy that and make a margarita." <laughs> well, tell her I'll bring it to the music meeting. She can see. <laughs> there you so. go. That sounds good. So craft beer has been described as uh, in a recent article as having the strangest, happiest economic story in America, and the subtitle for the article is that corporate giants. Goliaths, it says, are taking over the U.S. economy, yet small breweries are thriving. Why? And it goes on to say, in almost every economic sector, including television, books, movies, groceries, pharmacies, and advertising, a handful of companies control an enormous share of the market. And the beer industry has actually been one of the worst offenders. They go on to say the refreshing simplicity of Blue Moon or the vanilla smoothness of Boddington's or the classic brightness of a Pilsner or Cal or the bourbon barrel stouts of Goose Island are all owned by either Anheuser-Busch or InBev Miller Coors. Right. Uh, and as recently as 2012, these two duopolies controlled nearly 90% of beer production. But in the last decade, something strange and extraordinary, the article says, has happened between 2008 and 2016. The number of brewery establishments expanded by a factory of six and the number of brewery workers grew by 120%. A 2,000-year-old industry has sextupled in establishments and more than doubled its workforce in less than a decade. Even more incredibly, this has happened during a time when overall U.S. beer consumption has declined. So it goes on to tell the story of how amazing the whole craft brew legend is right now and how this is one of it's very I highly recommend the story in fact we'll make sure that we post a link to this in the uh, in the show notes it's from an article written by Derek Thompson and it's uh, from the Atlantic Daily is where this well, I think appears. right now uh, this in the last 10 years let's say We've had uh, so many people that they've been around craft brews enough now to where it's not unusual, it's not different, it's not right. strange. And so many people are more open to just trying different things, not instead of like the same old, same old that they always That's have. right. Another article that actually references the one that I just shared uh, from the Atlantic, Month uh, the Atlantic Magazine uh, that called craft beer the strangest, happiest economic story in America, um, this lays out the four big questions, the four pressing questions for craft beer in 2018. So here's what they are. We'll see if you agree. The first one, can local breweries sustain additional locations? Um, that's, it's a great question. Like, uh, Take a brewery like <coughs> here in Houston, let's say um, uh, the guys downtown that are so close to our, uh, where we both live. Uh, Eighth Wonder, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, take it like Eighth Wonder. They're doing a great job of serving their community, mm -hmm. uh, getting their beer out into at least Houston area stores. You can find them in the grocery store. You can find them all over. Yeah. Could they sustain another location? Could they open in Austin or Dallas Fort Worth or even Katy or or you know Sugarland or someplace? I think it would depend on the business plan because a lot of restaurants <laughs> do that. Local chains, you mm -hmm. know. No, that's true. I, I and a local chain is nothing to you know scoff at. A good local chain is great. The question number two: Can corporate craft take over the country? Uh, it says here, purchasing respected craft brewery brands like Goose Island and Elysian was the first step in the beer conglomerate's plan to take back their market share from the independents. Now we're entering phase two, an attempt to expand those brands uh, through the proliferation of brew pubs. And so if you think about it, and I, I, listen, if there was a Goose Island beer pub that opened near me, I'd go. I yeah. know it's owned by AB, but still, I like their beer. Yeah. They produce some fantastic beer. Like I would totally go to that. So this is the next, uh, you know, this is the next uh, question. Um, Ballast Point, which is owned by Constellation mm -hmm. Spirits, uh, has said they plan to add to their seven existing tasting room locations by opening in the Chicago area and in the downtown Disney District in Anaheim. Um, will this succeed in legitimizing corporate craft beer? 
that remains to be seen. But that's question number two. Question number three, is the hazy IPA here to stay? Is this part of the the big the big things uh, uh, that we've talked about with the unfiltered or hazy IPAs? The question is, do these have staying power, or is it a momentary trend? It says that's question number three. And question number four, could craft light become a big thing? We've asked that question. I think it could. If the beer is good, because let's face it, I could stand to lose a pound or two. I wouldn't mind drinking a light beer every once in a while, but I need to drink something good. It's part of why we did the 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 craft beer, uh, the light beer uh, blind taste test. Is go okay, what what really works here? Yep. Yangling, Yangling light, if you can get it, and that omission light, which is the one that's also gluten free. I thought those were pretty good beers. Like I would put those in my regular beer rotation. Although I do have some of the other light beers, I have you know, some of the Tecate light and the Lone Star light left in the fridge and i do find that when i go for a beer and i'm like oh man those are the only ones cold i'm a little disappointed so. you know a lot of times those end up being cooking beers yes yes or dishwashing beers not that i wash the dishes with them but i reward myself with a beer when i wash the oh. dishes <laughs> and i'm usually happy at that point to have any beer of any kind i think we're coming from different directions when i say cooking beers i'll usually use that in the actual i food. understand <laughs> i knew i knew what you were getting at all right we'll be back we've got a taste of caddy wampus here and uh, we still have a couple of interesting things to report to you including by the way craft beer is not the only thing doing well u.s whiskey exploded in 2017 love that in terms of revenue we'll tell you about that coming up I still like kind of having that as the guideline, but I didn't want to stop halfway through that story. Yeah. And we still had like a minute and a half left, you know, before I started it. So that's some good tequila, babies. Copita. Mm hmm. Yeah, I bet that makes an absolutely wonderful margarita. And good on its own, but I'm just imagining it's it's mixing. Potential. I know the tequila I was trying to think of when I said Sousa. That wasn't the one I was trying to think of. I was trying to think of Hornitos. Hornitos. Hornitos has a reposado that is very good. I think this is better. Oh, okay. But that, that reposado, like I can totally, like if I'm at a bar someplace, and, uh, they, uh, just give me some of that Hornitos, uh, you know, because they usually, usually can find that. You know. so <laughs> I need to pick up a bottle of that Skelly. That stuff's so good. The tequila. So uh, good. Oh. Uh. I remember when we had it on the show the first time. You were like, "What?" <laughs> it's it's amazing. That's that's probably of all the things I have in my bar. That might be my favorite thing that's in my bar. <laughs> that's nice. So, all right. Uh, so this is segment five. Segment five. Uh, let Bring me make sure it. I've got what I need here before we start. Forgive my little bit of stuffiness. I think my uh, my. Uh, Sinuses are deciding to make a showing today. Lovely. I hate when those guys show up. As a matter of fact, let me go blow my nose before we start this one. Okay. I made a new, uh, I guess they call it a carousel. Yeah? So you, could, you see it here on the, on the thing. So it's, oh, cool, so yeah. Breaks, I just put that on. Oh, so that's great. Love that. Seat. Love that. That's great. We're going to have to work on that. What's that? That corner's getting a little worn. Oh, yeah. Remind me after the show. Talk about dates for California. All right. I think we have it narrowed down. Yeah, but, uh, three, three California, here I come. Down. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> check it. Check. Here we go. Yeah, I got like the eye itchy and the sneeze. Yeah, that's definitely allergies. Flaring. Oh wait. Let me I took my allergy medicine this morning too. Drink 
water. Presenting. What's that? Presenting for your pleasure. The Kitty Wumpus. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'll be we may be taking some of that. Oh, Ian likes to be. That's, that's uh, right. Yeah, he likes me right likes down to, the middle. Yeah, there. yeah, he likes that. Uh, okay, ready, rep. That's okay. If pe- if people always just picture me with a floating beer bottle by my head, I think that's that works. Out. I'll survive. On the beach in a while. Welcome back to Smoking and Toastin'. This is the radio program that's all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand-rolled cigars. Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to show number 75 of Smoking and Toastin'. Woo, Silver Jubilee. Complete with high-quality sound effects that you don't get in other shows. No, we don't, we don't scrimp on the sound machine. Yeah, no, we don't. <laughs> We, we definitely don't. We definitely don't. Hey, uh, Ian, I wanted to mention this. We've actually talked about this place before, uh, and it's closing. It's in Austin, Texas. It's on 6th Street. It's the Babalu Cigar Shop. You know the place mm-hmm. I'm talking about, right? Yeah, they're closing. They say homelessness and other downtown problems are forcing them to close the wow. store. Now, they do have another location, so they'll just be transferring everything over to the other location. And to be honest, it wasn't my favorite cigar store in the world. Uh, their cigars are, I thought were okay, but I just you know they oh, it was one of those places that only sold their own uh, right, products. Right, right. And unlike uh, Manny uh, down in El uh, Cubano, uh, El Cubano, yeah, which his products are great. I, I thought some of those were okay, and and others I didn't I didn't like so much. But I love what they were doing, and they would roll cigars there on the premises and and do all of that. Uh, and unfortunately, those guys have now uh, closed after 21 years on East Sixth Street. Uh, they're moving everything to their North Austin location on Burnett Road. That so. reminds me, I have to go see Manny. I think I smoked my last El Cubano. Manny at El Cubano. A big shout out to Manny. We he was honestly one of the best guests we've ever. He had was on so this fun, program. wasn't he? He was so good and so fun. And by the way, big shout out to uh, to so many of the great guests that we've had in the past uh, in the past nine or ten shows. I mean, we really have had some amazing yeah. people on the show who've who've done just a, a, a wonderful job. Well, let's face it. We're fun to be around. We are fun to be around because, you know, <laughs> I think mostly because of the smoking and drinking. But, yes, we are fun to be around. <laughs> we are fun to be around. U.S. whiskey makers, check this out. Revenue, domestic revenue in the United States for U.S. whiskey makers was up 8.1% in 2017. Good for the industry. U.S. whiskey is on fire. And uh, American whiskey makers um, just stirred by the consumer's thirst for their their product. I also, mean, they have to employ somebody, great. right? Demand grew in the U.S. and overseas as well as the steel spirits industry uh, gained market share. But, uh, but combining U.S. revenues for bourbon, Tennessee whiskey, and rye whiskey, it was up. Two hundred and fifty-two million to three point four billion, eight point one percent, or two hundred fifty-three million to th- that was what. Okay, let me let me say this again. Combined U.S. revenues for bourbon, Tennessee whiskey, and rye whiskey rose eight point one percent, or a rise of two hundred and fifty-two million dollars to a total of three point four billion in 2017. Now I got that information. Speaking sorry. of Tennessee whiskey, have you heard Warren Haynes sing that song? Uh, oh man! Oh, uh, see, I, no, because I'm—I I probably was afraid it would be a jam band thing, and I stayed away from it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Warren Haynes like only does jam band thing when it's uh when it's the Allman Brothers. When okay. He's doing his own thing. Okay. It's blues rock. All right. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Government Mule kills. Yeah. Uh, Government Mule is actually quite good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They have a song that Billy Gibbons plays guitar on. <sighs> broke down on the Brazos. Oh man, broke down on the Brazos is incredible. That's one of Thank my you for favorite me of the lines. He goes, <laughs> he goes. I ain't had the blues yet today. But I can feel it coming but on. But I can feel it coming on. That song is so <laughs> I good. I love that. That song is so good. I absolutely love it. You know, I haven't had a barrel-aged <clears throat> sour stout today. Oh. But I can feel a little catty wampus coming on. Hey, there it is. It. That's the sound effect we've been looking for <laughs> for the whole show, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. Yes. Um, I knew you could do it, Cruz. <laughs> so let's talk a little about Caddy Wampus. First of all, it's an interesting bottle. Let me show this to the camera. It's it's a uh, um, for it's those a of you from the north, by the way, funk, as they call it. For those of you from the north, Caddy Wampus actually means something's a little off kilter. Yeah, something some just slightly off. <laughs> uh, 
That's that's not something you hear, you know, if you're walking around so in New right, England. Right in the middle, right. <laughs> <laughs> so do that New England accent and just uh, slip yeah, the word cattywampus right, in uh, there. Do that for it's, me. It's wicked piss. It was cattywampus. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't work. It doesn't work, does it? Uh, a pack the cab by the hobo, Kitty Wampus. No, it doesn't work. <laughs> it just doesn't work. Uh, so Nola Brewing Company, uh, out of New Orleans, Louisiana, of course, and Brewery Toro, which you're yeah, quite familiar love with, Brewery right? Yeah, uh, So they got together, and I love this trend of breweries collaborating. The collaborations, yeah. I just, and that's something, you know, you talk about the competitiveness that's always existed between, let's say, even though now they're kind of owned by the same sort of giant conglomerate, but like between Anheuser-Busch and Miller, right? Right. Uh, as they've been the big beer giants over the years, a huge competition between those two. Uh, and yet that kind of competitive spirit doesn't seem to jibe with the spirit of crap brewery. Okay, but I want to I pause on that. Okay. Okay? Because that competitive spirit between... Um, light beer A and light beer B um, isn't that they're trying to compare their beers. They haven't changed those beers in so long that it doesn't matter. They can't actually compete those two beers together because they've, they've been the same for years and years and years. They changed the packaging and they're competitive with their commercials and the packaging. Right. Like, that's it. That's the only thing they're competitive with. All right, not to detour, but I want to ask you this question. All through the holiday season, on everything I watched on television, whether it was sports or things, other things that I couldn't fast forward through the commercials, I kept seeing this ad for Anheuser Busch and this special uh, pre-prohibition uh, amber beer. I would try it. Right. Can't find it. I looked for it everywhere. I looked every I place could I not find, I wanted to try it on the show. I went to that part of the beer aisle that I never go to, the part with all the blue and the red boxes. <laughs> yes. yes. Right, and they're just stacked to the ceiling. I looked for it. I looked for it again when I went and got beers for the, huh? the light beer show. I've never seen it actually in person. I saw it, just the ads. And like you. they must have spent a billion dollars advertising that. Honestly, that ad was on Where'd so it go? much. Where did it go? Does anyone? Did anyone get to taste did that? Anyone try it? Right. I don't understand. I like. I just. You but know. then I don't understand the dilly dilly <laughs> ads either. So what do I know? Right, well, Let's get that. back to real beer. Uh, Nola and uh, Brewery Toro have uh, have gotten together and they put funk on the label. You do realize if this has flavor, you're going to spend time in the pit of misery. <laughs> yes, I am because it's a cattywampus barrel aged sour stout that I. have really been enjoying or at least that's what i would uh, that's what i would be likely to say so anyway it does come in a big bomber and uh looks like a actually looks like, like a 750 milliliter uh wine bottle is what it actually is what it actually looks like in fact i'll show this again to the camera that is a straight up wine it. bottle right, it is a, right it actually looks like a wine bottle except that it had the beer uh cap top to it. Uh, pours out with some viscosity, but then again, it is a stout, so you would expect some of that. Uh, but it is a barrel-aged sour stout, and it's a collaboration. You know, I could smell that from over here when you open these, the bottle. Yeah, between these two breweries. And here's what it says on the bottle. It says, Park and Wild, Dark and Wild, I'm sorry, I misread. <laughs> dark and Wild, like a moonless night down the bayou. This rich sour stout is the combination of two former Crescent City homebrews turned pro barrel wranglers. Mixed cultures, mixed barrels, and slightly cattywampus. It is 6.8% and it is 1 pint and 9.4 fluid ounces to the bottle. So interestingly enough, um, uh -huh. because I have done my research. Yes, of course. Interestingly enough... This has more carbonation than you'd expect from any stout. Mm -hmm. It also has a much, much lighter mouthfeel than you would ever expect from a stout. Well, most of the barrel-aged stouts have got your chewiness going on. Yeah. You know? It is a robust flavor. Mm -hmm. It uh, is not lacking on sour. Mm -mm. I mean... I was about to say, the sour comes through. There is much sour. It almost tastes more like a sour than it tastes like a stout. Right. Mm -hmm. But the interesting thing is, the tail end of it, when you finish a sour, you're left with a bitter sourness, mm -hmm. much like much like a good lemonade or something like that. You get that they're a little right, sweet, right. but you end up with but that. But you enjoy that sour. Yeah. Right. You enjoy that. Or even like a good, uh, uh, what do you call it, Sour Patch Kids mm -hmm. when you're at the movies. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, who doesn't eat those at the movies? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you can exactly. always tell the person's got it too because the package is like, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You cannot be quiet with that package. <laughs> it's like shut up. I'm watching Star Wars. But oh, sour package. But at the tail end of that, it leaves you with a malt and fruitiness. Yes, that's what's interesting. The like a dark sour cherry kind of fade, fruitiness. and then you get that dark cherry. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. big time. I was almost going to say raisin, but it is more of a dark cherry, right? Flavor. Or plum even, mm-hmm. like plum, like but but the bitter part of a plum, like the skin or right next to the skin, you know, kind of thing. Mm. And it's good. It's it's mm. a really interesting, really wonderful thing. It's really interesting. It's part of the Nola Funk series. It says on the bottle, but that's really about all the information. That they give us that and what I well, read just, about the just uh, to come full circle on the show today down the bayou. I'm for it. Okay, well it's good to know <laughs> because because it. you know Ian, you're you're so generally vague about what you like. <laughs> right. You know that it's good to know that you never know with me. I'm you know. Um, so I will say that I'm I, I was expecting it to be uh, thicker and have more v- chewiness and viscosity to it. In not doing so. It winds up almost being a sessionable stout. Well, it's also much lighter than a lot of stouts in, yeah. the, uh, in the alcohol category, especially what you'd expect in a bomber. Because, mm-hmm. you know, most anything you pick up that says stout in a bomber is it, usually <laughs> pretty serious. It starts yeah. at like oh. 7%, oh, yeah, right? And this one's what, 6.5? Yeah, said? I think 6.5, is that right? Uh, 6.8. 6.8, yeah. So yeah. you're getting there. But, you know, I'd have to say that is, that's impressive. That's a good share. I, I, this would be. I tell you what, and this is to me, this is what bombers were meant to be, which is a bomber should be that bottle that's a little bit special, mm-hmm. and you open it up when a friend comes over and you kind of you share, share it, it right, and yeah. enjoy it together. And that, this fills that bill for me. Like, this would be, if you came over, we just opened this up, kind of like we just did on the show. I mean, it'd be, uh, <laughs> but, it, but it'd, be, it'd be the right vibe, you know what right, I mean? Right, right. Like, oh, I'll take a little more of that. Yeah, because there's a lot of times in a bomber, the beers are so rich. You uh-huh. know, the, the the ales or beers or whatever you want to call them, they're so rich that a full bomber of it is just a little much. It's not- Unless it's Brother yeah. Thelonious, by the way. Yes. Um, I have in the past um, enjoyed a full bomber of that myself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, it, listen. This, while at home, but you're right. The caddy wampus is not what I'm going to open while I do the dishes. Right, right. You know, uh, that's gonna, you'd have to have yeah. a lot of dishes, yes, by the yes, way. Yeah, but I, sometimes I do. So, uh, <laughs> but but the point is, yeah, it's not it's not quite the beer for that. But for sharing with a friend, uh, I, I'm going to recommend it pretty highly. Again, if you don't like sours, you're probably not going to like it. Well, yeah, and brewery Tarot, that's their thing. The mm-hmm. sours, mm-hmm. like they have so many flavors of sours mm. uh, going on, and they're so good at it. Well, hats off to Brewery Tarot, and hats off and to uh, everyone who's been involved in getting us to show number 75. What did you call it? The Silver Jubilee, I think. Silver Jubilee. I could be uh, completely episode? wrong on that, but I'm going to stick by it, even if I am wrong. That's what I love about you. You'll just you, when you once you plant your flag, you it's it's there. I'm bulldogging this one. Yeah, if I'm yeah. not right on the Silver Jubilee thing. We're changing what Silver Ju- Silver Jubilee means. That that works for me. <laughs> All right, a lot of great things to come in future shows, including uh, uh, several more on location shows. We are even planning. Uh, at some time in the spring, a California trip, so we can uh, taste us some California brews and uh, maybe do a little uh, examination of some California I've, I've smoke heard shops. That, that California yeah. knows how to party. <laughs> It's interesting. I've heard that, too. <laughs> Just recently I heard that. Uh, I'm trying to remember where. Uh, thank you for listening to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks again to uh, Adam for producing. And uh, and thanks to everybody who's been a part of getting us to show number 75. Here's to the next 75. And uh, thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Headed down the bio. Caddy Wampus. Interrupting all programs. What a wonderful Ooh, show. That was fun. It was good like that. The evils of smoking cigars. That was funny. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed that. It allowed us to say that in the title at least, so that was good. <laughs> well, we need to uh, sensationalize everything, so we'd be like, like drinking water. Is it yeah. bad for your kids? Right. Next on the news. Right. <laughs> That's right. Coming up on today's Smoking and Toasting, beer can kill you. <laughs> if you drink too much beer, it will kill you. Okay, welcome to the show. I used to do. Are we uh, off of Facebook Live? I can. You want me to cut it? Yeah, go ahead and cut it. Thank you. Bye, Facebook. Facebook.